Okay, here we have another good core two question. So obviously we're gonna be using our calculator for this and it involves finding the area using the trapezium rule. So that means you know it's going to be a little bit more work and there are gonna be some crazy numbers that we're gonna to have to deal with. Um, with these types of questions, it's gonna be important we take our time and we work on input into the calculator. For this, I'm going to be using my Texas Instruments TI-84 and I'll guide you through here. If you're using the Casio or any type of computer, uh, any type of calculator to go along with it, input's pretty much gonna look the same. Uh, no major differences, but this is what I have on this computer, so this is what I'm gonna be using. Okay, so we want to find the area using the trapezium rule. So if we look at this, we're gonna start at 1.5 and go all the way to six. So it doesn't really matter what this graph looks like. I don't know, say it looks like that. If we look at here, we're gonna have four ordinates or three strips. Those ordinates are the lines that go up and down. So if we have four of those, we can see that we have, in fact, three strips. We're gonna be starting at 1.5 and we're gonna be going all the way to six. So how do I figure out because I want these heights to be the same, how do I figure out what height's gonna be? Well, the height is actually gonna be the end point minus the start point divided by how many strips we're going to have, which in this case is three. So six minus 1.5 is 4.5. We divide that by three, uh, and that's gonna give us 1.5. So each height is worth 1.5. So in counting from 1.5, I get 1.5. There I get 3.0. Here I get 4.5. Add another 1.5, I get six. Hooray, I did it. Now if you think about this trapezium, I need to actually find out what these values are. So the F of the 1.5, the F of three, the F of the 4.5, and the F of six. Once I know these points, I can make my little trapeziums, find the area all nice and neat. And so that's what I'm gonna be doing and that's what the calculations are gonna be doing. Uh, so I'm gonna write out what I would put into the calculator and then actually do it. So first off, we need to actually find F of 1.5. So that is going to be 1.5 squared and I'm going to actually need to put in 1.5 squared minus one underneath the square root. It does say integral and dx, but remember we're using the trapezium rule for that, so we just really need to figure out what the y value is, what the output is, um, and that's just gonna be just like this. So if you're using your calculator, uh, what we can do is if we have this, try and make it look just like that. So I'm gonna have 1.5, squared, brackets are key here. So you want to put brackets, then I'm going to put my square root. Here I'm going to have the 1.5 squared, still minus one, and I'm going to close my brackets for that. And so that looks pretty much what I need to have it look like. And there we go. Now with this, the more numbers you have here, the more accurate it's going to be. Um, I'm gonna choose five, because why not? So that's gonna be 2.51558. But that's a seven, because we're rounding, I'm rounding. So 2.51558. 2.511. I already lost it. 51558, okay. We're gonna do the same thing for F of three. Now, if you're following along with me and you're saying to yourself, well, obviously I don't need to do all this, well, then scroll ahead in the video. Now, this calculator is nice because I can actually scroll up, hit the input again, and I could change these. So instead of, instead of retyping everything all over again, I just need to type in what the value is. 
So here, instead of 1.5, I'm going to type in 3. Pretty clever, right? Yeah, I thought so myself. All right, so here, 25.45584. 25 point, I already forgot, 45584. Five, mm -hmm. Next up is f of 4.5. So that's going to be 4.5 squared brackets, 4.5 squared minus 1, all underneath the square root sign. And again, if your calculator will do this, which I believe the Casios, if you're using a Casio, will. Just scroll over, replace the 3 with the 4.5, uh, 4.5, 88.84651, 88.84651, ooh, I remembered it that time. All right, finally, the last one, f of 6.0. So we're going to have 6.0 squared, square root of 6.0 squared minus 1. And again, I'm just going to change the input here. Six point zero. All right, 212.97887, 212.97887, cool. Okay, so with those values and those numbers, those are here. Now, if you think about the formula for the area of a trapezium, uh, what we're gonna do is this, we're going to take one half the height and we are going to add these different values. This is important to note though. If we look here, um, we have the one endpoint and we have this length. For the next trapezium, we have this length and this length. For the last one, we have this length and this length. So these two middle values here are being counted twice and these two endpoints are being counted once. So, to find out the area, I'm going to do one half the height, which is 1.5, um, and then I'm going to do this um, value at the end here, so the f of 1.5, which is 2.51558, going to add the very last one, 212.9788. Um, and I'm going to add this to double the sum of the middle two, again, because we're adding this twice. Look, if you want to add this and then add it again and add this and add it again, that's fine. But mathematically, it is the exact same as if we just double this. So 25.45584. Plus 88.8465. Make sure I put my double brackets there. And um, just need to calculate this. Oh boy. Okay. So let's do that. So <laughs> we're going to do um, one half, which is going to be 0.5, times the 1.5 for the height. And, um, you know, I guess I could put that in brackets. It's better to put that in brackets than not. I don't think I need them, but I hate to do all this input and mess it up. So I have that, and I'm going to be timesing all of this. So I'm going to actually put in small brackets these two numbers, which I didn't before. So that's going to be the 2.51. 558 plus 212.97887. Close those brackets and I'm going to add two times um, the sum of the middles. So 25 
0.45584 plus 88.84651. Close those brackets. Don't forget I had other brackets going on, so I'm going to close the main brackets as well. And I get this. So they actually say to three significant figures. So with all of this, it equals three, 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 because those are my significant figures. Um, and that's it. Sigh of relief. Again, with, with this type of problem, it's really labor intensive. It's a lot, it's a lot of input. It's a lot of using your calculator. But uh, hopefully you can see that the, the concept is not overly difficult. It is maybe a little bit challenged to kind of wrap your head around it first. But once you understand what's going on, it, it will work out. Um, and look, draw yourself a little picture here if you're more of a visual person. For me, it kind of helped here. I will say that the actual graph of this function looks absolutely nothing like this. But... It doesn't really matter because this one really exaggerates what's happening here with the trapezium. So as I have these different trapeziums, there are the two bases. There's the height, there's you know, the fourth side, and there's the double side there. Okay. Now remember, with these curves, if um, they're, you know, they're changing at such a small amount, so if we actually take these strips and make them smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, what we actually have is a definite integral. So if we take these and even just double the ordinates that we had. So here for this, this big one here, see we can undershoot it. But if we change those ordinates, now it's actually, there's less empty space there. If we double those, it's going to get even more. So for the part B, when it says, how can you obtain a better approximation? If we increase the number of ordinates, we're going to improve this value. We're going to make it more accurate. And for us, for right now, that's it. That's all they want. So all the red is your four marks, and this green, that's all they want for one mark. All they had to say is increase the number of ordinates. Uh, you could have said something like, oh, you know, not round this off too much. Um, and while, yes, technically that's a little bit more accurate than just these three significant figures, that's not the correct answer. And if you put that down, you will not get the mark. What they're asking is not how do you make this specific 333 more accurate to itself, but how do you make the overall approximation more accurate? And you do that by increasing the number of ordinates. Okay, if you have any questions,